Hey, I'm Jay Bolkert. I'm the uh, co-author of King Warrior, along with my wife, Erica Newsonen. I'm Lucas Green. I'm the illustrator of King Warrior. And you're listening to True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. If you want to drop me a line, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with Jay Bulkhart and Lucas Green about the graphic novel King Warrior from Renegade Arts Entertainment. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. If you want to help the site and the podcast, please consider supporting the effort by chipping in at ko-fi.com slash True North Country Comics. Your patronage is greatly appreciated. Jay grew up in Farmtown, Ontario, lived in France for a few years, and finally made his way up north in 2001 to Yellowknife. There he carved out a career as a filmmaker with his company Artless Collective, founded the Dead North Film Festival, and learned to hunt. Originally written as a feature film, King Warrior is Jay's first graphic novel created along with co-writer Eric Neusen and illustrator Lucas Green. Originally from Canada's prairies, Lucas is a freelance animator, illustrator, and designer now based in Vancouver, British Columbia. With 15 years of experience, including 7 years as a designer for one of Canada's top public broadcasters, he works with clients the world over on projects ranging from short films and commercials to television and feature films. Lucas creates fantastical worlds, usually drawing spaceships or painting traditional folktales. According to Renegade Arts Entertainment, a story spanning the globe both imaginary and real, King Warrior celebrates the turbulent glory of childhood while encouraging the reader to reconnect with that rich inner palace of youthful imagination that ultimately holds the key to our freedom. Living in different worlds and separated by an ocean, A father and son try to stay connected through the power of imagination as their distant lives pull them further apart. And so, without further ado, here's my chat with Jay Bulkhart and Lucas Green about the graphic novel King Warrior from Renegade Arts Entertainment. So, Jay Bulkhart and Lucas Green, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Hey, thank you for having us. I appreciate your time. What I usually do to start off the interview before we get going with questions is ask the creator about their first comic book. So I'll ask you each, maybe Jay, you can go first. What was the first comic book that you read? Well, I think I'm going to possibly disappoint you. I wasn't super into comic books when I was a kid. Part of that maybe had something to do with the fact that like I moved to France, uh, you know, for like four years of my childhood and it just wasn't a thing over there. But when I really got into this was when I read Joe Sacco's Safe Area Garage Da about 10, 15 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. And I just fell in love with the reality, the grit, and the drama of actual journalism portrayed through, in my mind at that time, comics. But now, you know, now I know it as a graphic novel. So hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Very good. How about so you, it Lucas? Wasn't Batman. It would have been <laughs> Batman. <laughs> okay, no worries. How about you, Lucas? What was your first comic book that you read? You know, growing up, I lived and breathed Tintin and Asterix especially Tintin, there was something about the way the the research that went into the worlds that they created for those books where you really felt like you were in a place. And I I think both of those uh, series really had an influence on my approach to illustration period, let alone my love for graphic novels and comics. Yeah, both very good inspirations, that's for sure. But I want to ask you, who or what inspires you to create today? Maybe, Lucas, I'll ask you to go first. That's a good one, because it changes from day to day. I'm so blown away by my peers. You know, I'm on uh, a website called ArtStation, which is just an open portfolio site where artists post their mostly concept art and some comic book art character designs, things like that. And I'm always learning something new about process and vision through that site. But in terms of like what I'm 
looking at these days and what really inspires me. James Gurney is my hero. Like, again, I grew up reading Dinotopia and to this day I follow his career and he's an incredible artist and illustrator. And also uh, Doug Chang, who was a very influential concept artist at ILM, sort of um, in the era of the Star Wars prequels and even like into the modern day Star Wars franchise, he's the art director. I basically learned to draw by looking at his artwork. And to this day, like I'm watching both of these artists continue to grow and it makes me want to keep learning. That's cool. That's very cool. How about you, Jay? Who or what inspires you to create today? I'm at the very early stages of writing a novel that might be a graphic novel or a short story anthology. I, I don't know quite yet, but I think it's it's heading towards a novel. And so what's what's inspiring right, me right now is I'm sort of getting into like Ray Kurzweil, who's a futurist. And so I'm, I'm thinking a lot about the future and reading different kinds of uh, essays and stuff like that on futurists just to get a sense of where I think the world is going. I find it really fun to kind of sit around and dream up what could be in the future uh, in lots of different ways that maybe people are, th- are thinking. So I'm also like researching the a microscopic world, uh, getting into what things look like on a microscopic scale and how their experiences might be. Uh, specifically, this novel that I'm working on is about face mites, uh, if you can believe it or not. And that doesn't even really explain what it's about, but l- really trying to think about what those things are like and how they survive on the human body. I think that's what's inspiring me a lot right now is just futurism. All right. Very good. Well, we're here talking about your latest graphic novel, King Warrior. So I'm wondering if you could t- talk a little bit about the story and what inspired you to write it. Sure. Well, I live in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, which is in the subarctic of Canada. It's it's cold here. It's uh, obviously it's the subarctic. We spend a lot of time trying not to walk here, so I've taken cabs over the years, certainly to and from the bar many many a time, and struck up conversations with the folks who are the cab drivers, and often they're from the African community. So that's one element. Another element was just the stories we would hear around town about folks who are cab drivers, but their families are back home. And I just started to think, like, uh, how would that be? What, what would that experience be like to come from Somalia to this town and sort of be working here, but your family's back home? Like, what's it like to try to explain the complete opposite of where your family is from and, and they they wouldn't really have a concept for it. So how do you do that? All of that also tied into, I guess, my personal experience growing up. I lived in France uh, for four years. I've also lived in Korea for two years. So I, I have experience knowing what it feels like to be the other in living in a place where you are the other in, in obviously in France, you know, people generally, I look the same as French people on some level. But certainly in Korea, I was the other. And so to feel I had sort of a connection with that and also the reality that my dad was a businessman growing up and he was often gone. I had to be kind of the man of the house, whatever that sort of meant, or at least I thought I had to. I always felt the need to sort of take care of my mom and, and my sisters while my dad was gone. And just sometimes the fear when you're young, if your your dad is gone, you just feel, you know, at night you start to dream up scenarios of burglars, or at least when I was growing up, it was ninjas coming in and having to protect my family. So all of those things sort of melded together, I guess, in what was an exploration of boyhood as it relates to your relationship with your father. And then I wanted to add a fantastical element to this just to make it super fun, sort of like the never ending story, like just dive in and you don't even come up for a breath until it's over. Yeah, I was reading the the preview copy and I was oblivious to the fact that you've got this Snow King Winter Festival. Isn't that cool? That is something else. Could you describe it uh, for people not familiar with it? Up here, it's probably about a, a stone's throw away from where I am right now. We're down on Yellowknife Bay here in Yellowknife. And starting in, uh, well, not in November, but starting in November, they start because the ice has just thawed. So once the lake freezes, Great Slave Lake, which we are a stone's throw away from right here, freezes, 
that's when the, the Snowcastle crew up here starts building a castle. So they'll cut the uh, uh, windows out when the ice is just nice and there's not a bunch of snow on it. That starts in November. And then they build for about two or three months an actual snow castle with ice windows. Uh, and it opens in March. And it's a, it's a month-long festival. So there's plays, there's comedy, there's music, there's art shows. It's like the biggest deal uh, in Yellowknife in the winter and the entire community comes down and people travel from all over the NWT and even visitors from Asia and all over the place come for this thing. It's a low key wonder of the world. Wow. It's really cool. Uh, Lucas, I was going to ask, did you get any reference designs in doing this when you're creating and and sort of building your world? Well, uh, a big part of designing the world of King Warrior was going up to Yellowknife and visiting and seeing it for myself. I'm based in Vancouver, so I didn't have a lot of hands-on experience when it came to fleshing out the world uh, of Yellowknife. So I got to go up and visit Jay at during the Snow King Festival, and I got to see the snow castle and tour around town see a lot of really lovely sights and and experience the city. And that was a really important part of the design process. And then feeding into that, Jay talked about being inspired by things like ninjas, trying to feed into that sort of fantastical side of the story, little bits from ninja movies, from martial arts movies, from like Viking warriors, all sorts of stuff like that, and really mash it all together into this sort of heightened reality version of Yellowknife in the fantasy scenes. Yeah, definitely, for sure. In fact, in some places, it had some Studio Ghibli type of uh, aesthetics to it, spirited away, perhaps, but uh, maybe that's that's just me. Maybe the nicest thing you could say about my art. (laughs) We're going to take all the books back and and cross out the quote on the back, and we're putting that quote there. No, 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 that's all good. (laughs) Now, now you you folks worked together. Uh, You also had someone else working with you by the name of Erica. I can't pronounce the last name. I'll mess it up. I wanted to ask a bit about the collaboration process. Uh, uh, Lucas, you're in Vancouver, and and Jay, you're up in uh, the north of Canada in Yellowknife. How did you guys work together? How did it all come together and become a book? Lucas, shall I start uh, just bringing the wife in? (laughs) Yeah, go for it. Okay, so uh, yeah, you're, I originally st- I wrote this as a as a feature length uh, script for a screenwriting competition. I wrote that draft, but then it became apparent that you know we couldn't make this movie for like thirty thousand dollars, <laughs> obviously. So I just sat with it for a bit and then decided, you know what, this is I put too much work has gone into this. Let's let's you know translate this into the graphic novel world because I was you know getting into graphic novels and had been for a while. It just seemed awesome like an awesome idea also it was a great idea for the future which we can talk about down the road here in terms of having a completed storyboard ready to go to show to a producer that wasn't the intent why we we got into it it's just a sort of a side benefit but during the transition the writing transition of of taking it from a script into a graphic novel that's where my wife erica newsonen came on board and really helped There were so many logic problems in the initial drafts because we're going from Somalia to Yellowknife. And then all of those elements of those stories are mirrored or at least strongly connected to what's happening in the fantasy world and vice versa. And so figuring out the logic problems of all of those things and how to make each one flow, even if you're like at the end of the book or middle way through the book and, and the dad is sitting in the cab, you know, whatever he has, you actually see him drawing on the book in the graphic novel is the right time for that to actually happen in the fantasy world and vice versa. Anyways, I don't know if I'm making sense, but she really helped organize the story. So, and then further to that, yeah. And Lucas, maybe I'll let you talk about Vancouver, but we had several writing sessions all together. And and I would also, you know, Lucas isn't credited as a writer, but he probably should be because he did really the same work. It took a lot. It was a logic problem. And I think we did a good job. Yeah. As far as collaborations go, I I think between me and Jay and Erica, I don't think I could have hoped for a better relationship 
because I felt like everyone was bringing something new and different to the storytelling and it just all worked out together. When I started the project, yeah, it was still sort of in that place where we thought it was going to be a feature film. And so I started it out thinking as a storyboarder. And then when it, we pivoted to the graphic novel, we had sort of gone through the entire script and done really rough storyboards. And then uh, Jay and Erica came down to Vancouver and we printed out all the storyboards and cut them up and uh, just you know put our heads together over a weekend. And as if we were editing a film, we just took all the storyboards out and we laid them out on pages to turn it into the comic book. And it kind of went from there. It was, it was a very back and forth process where I would be working on something and I'd come up against a wall and I'd show it to Jay and Erica, you know, and Erica would, she was like really great problem solver. So she'd come back with like, oh, well, what if you do this instead? Or what if we move this scene over there? And it just kept going back and forth until all of a sudden we had this beautiful comic book in front of us. Oh, so it sounds very organic as opposed to something like, here's a script, go, right? And, yeah. and you come back and say, here's the images. You actually collaborated very, very closely with everybody. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Good to hear. The other factor I wanted to ask about, you mentioned before, Jay, about uh, Somali community there in Yellowknife, and that's sort of the focus. <laughs> I noticed in the notes here that you had a cultural consultant to help you as well. What, what sort of component did that add to the story? Well, that was crucial and, and vital to the entire process. I mean, maybe it's obvious, but I, I'm a white guy. Obviously, this is telling the story of Somalian family. And so in the industry that I work in, which is the film industry, and really as a world, it uh, behooves all of us that if you're telling a story about folks from another culture or another ethnicity, that you hire somebody in a meaningful creative position where they have power and veto over the elements of their culture within that story. So as a result, it's not just me telling the story, it's myself and, and Lucas and Erica, along with Halima Muhammad, who is a wonderful lady who lives here in Yellowknife. I got to know the owners of a African restaurant here in town, told them about the project, told them I was looking for a cultural consultant. And the owner was like, oh, my friend, her husband is a cab driver here. They have a 12 year old son. I think she'd be great. So we met with Halima and explained to her everything that we wanted to do. She came on probably like when we had close to a final draft of the script. And she consulted on everything from the both in the fantasy world and in the real world. We got photos of an apartment of her friends in the, in the city that uh, the story takes place in, uh, Gallieco. And from people's wardrobes to how people speak to how children refer to their parents. And also, like, again, in the fantasy world with the uh, and Lucas can speak more to this. He did such an amazing job of taking her direction in terms of what a fantastical sort of regal king and queen outfit might look like from a Somalian standpoint in this fantasy world. It's a tall order. Yeah, we got her advice and her mark of approval and, and on every part that had Somalian culture represented in, in it, which is basically the whole thing. Did Halima help a bit more in terms of guiding you in terms of how you created the scenes and the, and the backgrounds and that sort of stuff? Well, if you're reading the comic book, when you see the scenes that take place in the Afra house in Somalia... That's actually, I think, is Halima's friend's apartment. Yeah. So she was able to provide us with so much reference material that I used to model the house in the comic book. Uh, it's just a big aspect of it is giving it a sense of place. And especially for this story, because it jumps back and forth between the fantasy world and the real world, it was just so important to establish a, a concrete reality within the comic book. And having Halima's reference material and, and having her on our side to give us tips and advice, it was so fantastic. 
Absolutely, for sure. Now, I just want to touch back on on something that J.U. said about film. Uh, The book description indicates that the story was originally intended as a feature film. So now that the book is done, this graphic novel, are you pursuing the film aspect? Are you going back to that again? That's a great question. And the answer, I think, is generally yes. It's not on the docket anytime soon. I think originally I really had envisioned it as a live action. You know, we live in the north. Uh, So like finding a local actors from the local Somalian community uh, would be a great idea. And that still is obviously a great idea. But the reality of shooting a film like that up here and surviving the conditions and the brutality of all of that and just the cost of it, I think I'm veering more towards virtual production or an animated version and I almost feel like the animated version is the one that makes the most sense. I mean, I want to see Lucas's artwork, mm-hmm. uh, you know, come alive on the screen. So it might be a mixture of motion capture and, you know, targeting those motion captures to to the artwork. And obviously a lot more is involved in that. But, yeah, that that kind of excites me, actually, to think about that. But there's just too many things on the docket right now. So it might be something to circle back to in about a year. Sure. Something to look forward to. There you go. So I want to ask you what you're doing to promote your book this year. I know we're winding up this calendar year, but will you be attending any conventions or festivals in the future to promote your book? I've got my my ear to the ground uh, here in Vancouver. I can't really say anything for certain yet, but I'm hoping to be at VanCAF coming up in, in May. And then also there's a couple other conventions around Canada that I'd like to visit if I happen to, uh, you know, be visiting family and be in town at the same time. Honestly, we, me and Jay and Erica all were in Edmonton in back in September at the Edmonton Fan Expo. And it was a really inspirational time for me, uh, being able to talk to the fans, people on the floor, and also just the other creators. So for myself, I'm looking for any opportunity to do that again and to be able to bring King Warrior to people's eyes who haven't seen it yet. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, I know that we've been talking a lot about King Warrior on this podcast, but I'm wondering, do you each have other projects that you can talk about? Any other upcoming things that you want to speak about jay maybe you can go first i I mentioned previously i'm working on a novel right now well i hope you're you're buckled in but basically it's about how the world ends in a spiritual apocalypse that is brought on by face mites and magic mushrooms (laughs) all right there you go (laughs) and how about you lucas what have you got on the go what's what's on your drawing table right now Literally what's on my drawing table right now is something that I'm very excited about. I am doing another collaboration with another writer, and we're hoping to bring a, possibly as a web series, as a web comic, uh, science fiction, space opera extravaganza called Constant Star. Hopefully in the spring of next year we can launch it. We're still working on it. We've got about a a year's worth of story prepped for it. And I'm currently working on the page art. I'm so excited to be doing a big science fiction adventure. I've been reading a lot of web comics lately, a lot of serial adventures, a lot of sort of fantasy sci-fi series that have been long running that have been a huge inspiration for me and i really want to sort of join into that world so it's called the constant star it actually has a website landing page called constantstar.ca right now it's just a landing page hopefully soon it'll be actual pages of artwork but it's just like oh it's gonna be so much fun so with, with all that you have on the go right now, I'm wondering, uh, do each of you have a place where you'd recommend people go to find out more about your current and your future work? Jay, do you have a website, social media, that sort of thing? I'm at Jay Bolkart on Instagram. Yeah, that's what it is for now. I mean, I have a film company called Artless Collective, artlesscollective.com. And those are probably the two places where you might hear what I'm up to 
I'm kind of bad at social media. I got to get better, but there's a lot more happening than what you might see on there. I got to get better. How about you, Lucas? What, where do you recommend people go online to find out more about your work? My website is lucasgreen.ca. That's L-U-C-A-S, green like the color. And my Instagram is lucasartgreen. And I post basically everything that I doodle ends up on Instagram somehow. So Instagram is my sketchbook and my website is my final polished work. Very good. Well, Jay and Lucas, thank you very much for your time. Uh, but I'm wondering, are there any other questions I didn't ask that you want to get across in this interview? Come to Yellowknife. <laughs> you guys don't know what you're missing. I can come second with, that. <laughs> come up for the winter festival. Come up for the Snow King Winter Festival in March, everybody. Thanks to Jay and Lucas for the chat. You can discover more about Jay on Instagram at Jay Bolkart, that's J-A-Y-B-U-L-C-K-A-E-R-T, and at artlesscollective.com. And you can discover Lucas on Instagram and Twitter at LucasArtGreen, and online at lucasgreen.ca. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please leave a good rating. Also check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website and follow along in Tumblr at True North Country Comics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel and hit the notification button. Please send your feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. And if you want to help the site and the podcast, please consider supporting the effort by chipping in at ko-fi.com slash truenorthcountrycomics. Your patronage is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. Truth Country Comics Podcast is covered by Truth Country Comics, copyright 2022.